Hi guys, welcome back to Fanny for the Soul. So today, as you can see, I'm seated on a lovely blue Royal Enfield. So it's a motorcycle story, uh, not motorcycle diaries, but a motorcycle story. So I met these three young men, motorcyclists from Bengaluru in faraway Meghalaya, and on a rainy night, they told me many, many stories of their, uh, you know, riding through Meghalaya and uh, Assam. Um, I couldn't do the story with them then, but I caught. Caught up with all the three of them over a dosa and kapi in uh, Namma Bengaluru. So sit back and get on to the ride. Enjoy the ride. So, uh, you know, the happy moment for me because I've caught up with my biker friends from Bengaluru in this popular airlines cafe in the heart of the city. <laughs> I'm going to introduce them to you. From extreme left is uh, Rohil Raj with the beard. Then you have uh, Ravi Prakash in the center, and you know Danny Liao. You know, so Danny Liao is a very popular hairstylist in Bengaluru. Uh, uh, Bengaluru knows him very well. He has some I don't know what three weeks waiting list, <laughs> something like that. Then uh, you know Ravi is a healthcare uh, consultant, and uh, you know Rohil is in the hospitality business. But the common thread for them is all of them ride these big bikes, you know. So uh, Rohil rides a Enfield Himalayan, um, and then uh, Ravi rides a Triumph 900, and Danny is a KTM man, you know, a KTM. What is it? KTM Adventure. Adventure, yeah. So now uh, this, so they had an, a huge adventure in the heart of Meghalaya. They did about 3,000 kilometers in the northeast. Um, uh, biking but uh, in Meghale they had a uh, wonderful adventure and they are going to tell us more about it so who is going to start about that uh, adventure you all had in Meghale I think the route uh, base I think Ravi yeah. uh, can, can explain uh, yeah. Be the one yeah so Ravi you kick off by telling us uh, w what you all actually planned and where you all landed <laughs> ok so uh, we had initially uh, covered the Chirapunji area and uh, in and around that the double route there's a lot of waterfalls and in the second leg uh, of the mega leg what we have planned to do is uh, from Mawson Ram we were uh, supposed to touch Nongstein and from there uh, Boko in Assam and go back to Gohati. So uh, we had uh, of course the normal route so which was about maybe about 47 to 50 kilometers uh, from Mawson Ram if we have to actually go to Nongstein. Uh, what we thought was, no, 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 what you and Rohil thought while yeah. zooming in and out of the Google map was, explain that. Yeah, so when we were actually zooming in and out of the Google map, then we found uh, a little more adventurous, longer route, so which is uh, touching very close to the Bali of this border. About 5, 5.30, uh, we actually saw a huge patch of slush. So, it was almost like uh, needy. Um, Rohil took his bike uh, because he didn't have a lot of luggage and he does Himalayan. So we thought, okay, you do the the recon. I knew, <laughs> I, I, knew I could get out of it because so, I have to talk on the bike. So yeah, I thought, okay, let me give it, it a try. It will just, you know, you can paddle it out and uh, go. So he crossed and comes back and says, basically, Bakra, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Figure out what is there and come back. <laughs> so he goes, crosses. 
crosses the uh, the slash the and uh, it says uh, the slash is uh, till there and then uh, uh, Danny and I cross. I actually remove the luggage from the bike. Yeah, we removed uh, each and every pannier, uh, the pannier and, and the top uh, box and everything. You know, took it on our heads. <laughs> and I think Rohil did the most because uh, <laughs> I feel when I took I t I took the wrong line. When, when I took the slush uh, part, yeah. so I think when halfway my to... it was too deep and my bike couldn't go anymore. So then uh, two of them had to like struggle it out and you know move, lift my bike slightly off and get me on the right track. Uh, you know I think after that that's when uh, interesting things starts to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we left Rohil alone with two of our bikes. We took his bike and Danny and I and kind we of took went our keys down. with us. <laughs> so that Rohil doesn't run away with it. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, and mind you, it was a landslide prone area as well. So my anxiety was starting to kick in. Luck, boys. I show a dance bike, unfortunately, in the middle of nowhere. We're trying to get a look for network so we can just probably give a call to someone. Block us. So if we cross that bridge, then the roads were supposed to be pretty hard thing. Uh, so we thought we'll somehow get near the bridge and from there we will get geo signal and we may be able to make a call. Yeah. Uh, we went on and on and on for mm -hmm. almost an hour plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because almost you guys an hour left plus. at 7.39 exactly, I remember. Okay. And you were back at 8.32. Never reached. Yeah. We, we never reached the destination. But 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 as we thought we were reaching the the bridge, it started to it suddenly started to rain. Thunder, and lightning, and, and we were like we looked and at each other and we were like, oh we're shit. We were drenched. I mean, we were totally drenched because we didn't carry the uh, the rain gear from our bike. They were just wearing the t-shirts and the riding pants, and that's about it. And I could see the big big clouds coming in from. It's pitch dark. There's absolutely no light except for lightning, the moonlight. Lightning. And I could see the storm clouds coming in, which are massive, right? And it's open valleys. So you could see the storm clouds with the thunder and the lightning coming in. And the tree was swaying and there was so much of wind as well. I was uh, in a whole zone where I was like, okay, maybe this, I'm not going to make it out of this day. I started <laughs> making videos for myself, like if I come out of this alive. <laughs> so I think when we went, when we reached Rohil, and where the bikes were passed, you know, we decided that, okay, this is it, it's we have to kind of uh, tent and camp here, let's pitch the tent. So it was pouring like crazy and um, we pitched the tent, all three of us obviously helped out because it was pitch dark. Uh, you know, one tent and kind of three of us uh, sharing it. Uh, it's a two people tent. It's a two it's people tent, actually. but we somehow managed it. Two small people yeah. and I'm a big person. So. <laughs> yeah, so... I basically slept uh, with my legs kind of, I think most of the night I slept uh, with my legs folded and you know, just at the, at, at the entrance, I just... <laughs> you were sitting actually, Fast literally out half the time you were sitting. Yeah. And, and we uh, trying to I think up. I think at first light I woke up, I started kind of stretching and I did my morning routine and then Rohil uh, woke up as well. About 5.15 in the morning. Yeah, around 5.15, 5.20 in the morning. And then I said, you know what Rohil, can you take your bike, go to the village that is around 3-4 kilometers above, uh, which the way we came, just go get some water and if you find a mechanic, fantastic. If you can't find a mechanic, at least get the 12-bit uh, you know, T bolt, we'll figure it out. So we, I left around 5.30 and in the hopes that I'd find a mechanic or at least some food and water or something to be done as well. So it took almost an hour and a half just to get there, about 7 o'clock. And there was this beautiful person who said that uh, his name is uh, Lakshman Singh. I, he's still in touch with me, in fact. So this person just, you know, asked me to sit down. He asked me what happened. I just asked him for the direction, but he's kind enough to just, you know, put, uh, bring me into his shop. And he was, you know, he was like, have some tea, have some biscuits. I was like, no, my friends are waiting. I need to get the thing. He was like, your friends are anyway in that situation. You've been staying the whole night. Just another five to ten minutes isn't going to make a difference. So I told him about whatever happened in a small brief. 
uh, briefing session. And we, I had some biscuits, some tea, and I'd asked for some water from the person as well, all under the assumption that I'm going to pay for it, right? So then he was like, no, I'm just going to pay for it. You're not going to pay for it. I was like, no, because it's my responsibility. No, you're a human. I'm a human. I'm just trying to help you out. If you are in the situation, I'm sure you would help someone out as well. It was as simple as that, you know. It's that, it's that gesture. I mean, it was just about a hundred bucks or whatever, but it was a gesture that he put across when he saw another human being in trouble. So, or in distress, rather. So then he helped me understand where the mechanic was. I traveled over to the mechanic. The guy was brushing his teeth. It was about 7 in the morning. And he said, yeah, I don't mind. I'll come down. But then he sent his brother instead by the name of Raj. So I found out from Raj that Babu has been here for about 20 years. And he's originally from Bihar. Uh, and he had moved here in the uh, search for job. And uh, Raj moved here about a year ago to his brother's place as well. And both were really kind. They came back. We again came back all the way. Uh, it took about, I think, three hours for me to get back. Total round trip, I think it was almost five and a half, five and a half, six hours. Yeah, because I got back by while, ten, yeah, this guy. So I think while Rohil was Rohil was away, we were me and Ravi were packing up our tents. And then there was a villager doing his morning thing with an umbrella under his arm, and he was just walking down. He could have just continued, but he stopped and asked us what happened. Uh, are you guys okay? And then we were like, no, you know, this jam happened and blah, blah, blah happened. And then I think in, he was like, in the night, oh yeah, I think we saw you guys, you know, in the night. But I, we thought that you were, guys were locals and, you know, you all were doing your thing. So we didn't come in. I think the, the, the villager's name was uh, Khemraj. Khemraj Gurung. Khemraj Gurung. He, whenever I think of him, it gets me emotional. Uh, because of, you know of the kindness of the person. So he looked at us and we were quite flustered and he said, have you all had anything? Uh, what did you all eat last night? We said, we didn't eat anything last night, but we had some biscuits, you know. So he said, why don't you come, I'll make you all some tea. And we were just so happy and we followed him. We followed him all the way and then suddenly he takes a turn and he's walking up the mountains. I mean, up the 70, 80 degrees. 70, 80 degree climb. And it's such small steps that they've created so beautifully we wouldn't have ever found, found it last well. night for sure yeah. we went through I mean, that was right there. we yeah. were actually right searching there. yeah and, and, and he said why didn't you all come up last night we we're like find the place. we didn't it's find the place and it then is... yeah and then we finally went up uh, you know he served us some tea yeah. biscuits uh, biscuits and some uh, something to eat yeah, the... uh, but I think um you know, Mr. Kemraj was was so so kind. He spoke with us. He explained a lot of things about his family. He was from Assam. Yeah. yeah he's, what he was he's telling from Assam. Assam. So he's actually uh, a Gurkha from Nepal. So they had moved uh, uh, several many decades ago to Assam. And he's, he's a citizen of India. So he was telling initially when the mines were actually active, so they used to make like thousand, thousand five hundred bucks a day. And uh, after the the mines got closed, a lot of families went back uh, because these are all temporary shelters, right? So they just have a few sheets um, and you know mud floor and a few that mud chula and they cook everything there with uh, firewood. They don't really have anything else, you know, no electricity. And they welcomed us. You know, his his, huh. his mother, his, his daughter mother was there. Daughter was there. Three goats, so, two cats, two dogs. Almost a self-sustained. Yeah. Uh, they just welcomed dog, us. Right? Was, and then in the faint distance, um, we heard the Himalayan. You know, like did, 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 coming. And I was like so happy. But again, fingers crossed, and I was wondering if he brought a mechanic or not. So that's when we. Yeah. That's when Rohil came back. Yeah, I mean, then I... So what is the magic of Babua, the mechanic? It was actually Raj, the brother of Babua. Uh, Bab Achha, Raj came instead yeah. of Babua. Yeah, for whatever. And he immediately just sat on it and started fixing it. Didn't I didn't think it was... Five minutes. Five minutes five, at five top. Minutes, top. He, he had got a big pry rod. And he Told him specifically what. what. So you mean this Raj is. fixed uh, Danny's bike yeah. in five, ten minutes? Five minutes stops, yeah. He My had gosh. To, he removed the uh, he removed the obviously the uh, calipers grew whatever yeah, nuts, yeah. the nut yeah but and he removed the uh, uh, the oil as well the brake oil from the calipers 
and he fixed it back in a manner that at least there was some amount of play for the uh, brakes to hold on to the caliper. So there what happened was as uh, you know Ravi's bike was because there was a huge rock there so and and the slush was you know it's gooey right so you can't really ride you can't really ride fast this have to so his bike so his bike needed some assistance to push and unfortunately me and Rohil were at the back there was a truck yeah there was a truck there uh, and then we couldn't put the side stand so we thought okay the mechanic raj is there to help uh, ravi uh, let's see <laughs> and for his <laughs> well, for guy, yeah he was actually behind the bike yeah. trying to push so i i thought he's on the side when when i rev the bike the wheels spin and the whole slush he got completely covered with completely the slush. Covered Raj. Yeah. No, covered Raj. Please. I mean, I got the same experience earlier, but then I was in my gear. This poor chap was just on his t-shirt. And a... Like, just his eyes, you can see everything else. Oh, gosh. So, so, back, so the, the magician uh, mechanic, you all, you know, doused him with slush. <laughs>